One of the good advantages with revolvers in the right caliber is they typically have as good or better ballistics than a lot of semi-automatic auto loaders. Hello everyone and welcome back to AmbleMart.com where you can find real firepower online. In our previous video, we talked about the history of the 32 h and Magnum cartridge as well as a little bit about the history of h and as a company. Now what I'd like to do today is talk about whether or not the 32 h and Magnum has relevancy as an everyday carry cartridge. For those of you who are on the fence about revolvers compared to semi-automatics, I need to disclose something that basically is my own personal opinion, which is firstly, I think revolvers still do have relevancy as everyday carry selections. If you subscribe to the rule of three, which is three yards, three rounds, in three seconds, revolvers are going to stack up quite nicely. Yes, you won't be able to have a gunfight Miami Vice style, but let's be honest, I don't think that's terribly realistic anyway. One of the good advantages with revolvers in the right caliber is they typically have as good or better ballistics than a lot of semi-automatic auto loaders. So once again, maybe an advantage to the revolver. They're also simpler to operate. I don't necessarily subscribe to the idea that they're more reliable. In fact, if your revolver breaks down, you're in a lot of trouble because generally without a gunsmith in your pocket, you better have another gun. Speaking of that, these guys here for auto loaders, guys that carry semi-automatics for everyday carry, but would prefer maybe to have a backup gun, this is an excellent choice, small snub nose revolver. And I think you're gonna find if you give the 32 h and Magnum a chance, that's also another heck of an idea, which we'll demonstrate later on in our live fire ballistic test. Your options in guns related to everyday carry for guys that don't mind carrying a larger revolver is the Ruger SP-101. In my humble opinion, the caliber of 32 h and Magnum and the SP-101 is a perfect marriage. Yes, this gun might be a little larger than some people are used to carrying or prefer to carry, but if you're one of those guys who likes bigger, the Ruger SP-01, in my opinion, is probably the best choice out there. Some other options for you are the Ruger LCR series. Of course, you have snub nose, two inch barrel, enclosed hammer to make it easy to draw. And interestingly enough, in 32 h and Magnum, just like 327, you do get one more round as compared to using 357 or 38 in the same size revolver. Another option for those out there interested is the Ruger LCRX. The X has a hammer. Some people prefer double single action, and I totally understand why. Now, it might fly in the face of conventional wisdom of the hammer catching on things. That is true, and I'll leave that up to the viewer to decide which way is the best way to go for their individual needs. However, if you're buying a snub nose revolver to get proficient on the range, having the ability to cock the hammer and make a more precise shot is also a good feature in my humble opinion. Interestingly enough, as I was going over the data to make this series of videos, Charter Arms actually has the most models available in 32 h and Magnum. To that point, you can no longer get the Smith & Wesson J-Frame in 32 h and Mag. But what people are normally doing is buying it chambered in 327 Federal Magnum, which would allow you to shoot the weaker 32 h and out of it. So people are sort of starting at the top and filling in the calibers as they go down. So don't throw out your Smith & Wesson if you're one of those people that have to have one. You can still get 32 h and shootability. You're just gonna have to go about it in a different way. Same way one can do with 357 Magnum and 38 Special. Back to Charter Arms. They offer that model in something they call the Professional all the way down to a very condensed version of it called the Undercover Et. I've never shot those particular guns chambered in 32 h and although I have shot Charter Arms before, and they're okay. I'm not a big fan of the double action triggers on some of them, but 
to each his own. I don't know that people actually get into this platform of gun looking for super smooth and super accurate. It's really not what those guns were designed to do anyway. So keep in mind, they're not great range guns, but for what they were designed to do, protect your life inside of five or 10 feet, they do a very good job. And I think we're gonna find that the 32 h and Magnum does a better job than even 38 Special. The 38 Special has to be tweaked a lot or buy the particular ammunition to get it to perform at its best when one can just probably go out and buy the 32 h and mag and get there to begin with. Downside to 32 h and and there always is one, is the cost. It's very expensive compared to 38 Special, but if you're already handgun proficient and don't really have a mind to shoot the gun all that much, I think you're gonna find it's a very, very good choice. So. For everybody out there, everyday carry, if it was me and I was going to use a revolver to do it right now, based on what I know, and I might be convinced of something else in the next video, I would certainly go 32 h and Magnum over 38 Special. I know I'm going to get a lot of comments about that. I expect it. I really like the interaction with our viewers. They're amazingly knowledgeable, and I look forward to going over the data and the different loads that people come up with. I'll give them a try, and maybe you can change my mind. Don't be afraid to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video on the range.